Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of my mega park. Now, um, in this area we have all these, uh, well we have this mountainous uh, section. Uh, I guess it's sort of the character of this uh, of this area over here. And I kind of want to extend it. I think it'll be cool to have another, uh, well to extend the mountainous section to over here. And I think I, I've got the perfect ride for that. Uh, because I want to make a bobsleigh coaster. Now, I typically uh, don't uh, build these very often, so uh, it will also be a little bit of a challenge for me. But uh, I have ridden uh, three of them in in uh, different parks, so I do kind of have an idea of what I want for the coaster. Now, usually these coasters are white, um, but uh, for this bobsleigh coaster that I want here, to make it fit in this area over here, I think I'll make it uh, light brown to make it look like it's uh, made out of wood. Just like uh, flying turns at uh, Knobles. But it will have a layout that's uh, pretty much like uh, like uh, the Bob Pan in uh, Heide Park or, uh, yeah, or the one in uh, Europa Park. Alright, uh, time to start building. Okay, I'm making it uh, quite high. It's actually higher than the mine train coaster. Uh, but it will have several uh, block breaks throughout the track, just like the real ones typically do to prevent them from going too fast. Okay, so what we have here now is first uh, just some gentle spirals and then here there's the first uh, break section and then after that we have this uh, part with three spirals after one another and this is where the coaster will uh, pick up some uh, serious uh, speed. So yeah, I guess uh, you can say this coaster is divided into several sections. So um, what I will do after this is I will go upwards a little bit again. And then we will go to the third section. And there I actually want to have some uh, some tunnels. Alright, I kind of like this uh, layout. <laughs> so yeah, part of it will be underground, especially here uh, at the bottom. I kind of want to have it uh, weaving in and out of, uh, of the mountains. That'll be pretty cool. Now, um, I have quite a lot of block sections here. Um, uh, seven block sections. Uh, you should always have less trains than the amount of block sections that you have. Or else uh, you will continuously find trains uh, that have to wait for uh, one another. Now, there are some uh, sections where uh, the coaster will have some negative uh, g-forces. Uh, you should really be careful with those for, with the bobsleigh coaster, because uh, obviously it can go off the track if it goes too fast. For example, right over here, uh, it's uh, an exciting moment uh, when there's guests on the ride, because uh, yeah, if the speed's too fast, it will fly off the track. And when there's guests in uh, your vehicles, uh, it will actually increase the weight a little bit. So, uh, well, I think we'll be fine. This one's definitely fine, looking at the speed of the coaster. So yeah, this uh, this will be an exciting point. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think the track layout is uh, pretty solid. Alright, um, what I'll do now is uh, start on the landscaping uh, under the coaster. Obviously, we don't want to have it uh, this far off the ground. And, like I said, I want to have a mountain section here uh, 
well, I want to extend the mountainous section. So I will now do the landscaping under the coaster, just uh, to make it uh, fit in here. Alright, um, just as a general coaster building tip, uh, your coasters will usually look much uh, nicer and also more realistic um, if they are always a little bit above the ground. That's because then uh, the supports always get, uh, get drawn. Okay, if you look at uh, most real coasters, uh, typically they won't be put directly on the ground because the soil is not uh, a stable surface to build on. So typically you will still see some uh, footers and supports under the track, which will always be uh, very low uh, above above the ground, uh, even at its uh, lowest parts. This goes for uh, for most coasters, uh, not all of them. Some actually touch the ground, but uh, those are exceptions. So yeah, that's also what I'm uh, trying to do here uh, everywhere. So yeah, actually on all of my coasters, uh, you will always see them a at least a little bit uh, off the ground. I also think it just looks a little bit nicer to have something uh, supporting the coaster track everywhere. Alright, that's the rough landscaping done. I think I can now start working on the decorations and also on the coloring uh, of the landscape. And of course the ride will also need a nice uh, station. Since we have uh, seven block sections, that means we could have six trains on it. I'm only running three, just to make sure they don't have to wait for each other uh, all the time. Um, actually, well yeah, I think three is uh, enough for now. But yeah, that does make the capacity quite low, so uh, I won't make the queue uh, too long. And one thing you'll have to keep in mind is that if your ride has a lot of trains and you want to keep it realistic, you'll probably need a storage space for many trains on your uh, transfer track if you decide to make one. So yeah, that's what I will uh, do now first, just work on a nice uh, storage place for, for our trains.
when making uh, buildings, it's often good to uh, use different materials uh, for it. Uh, I often see people just make uh, big buildings out of the same type of wall. It will just make them look uh, bland and uninteresting. So what I usually do is I start off with a small uh, different layer, like this wood here. And then on top, for example, we place this uh, wall with these uh, windows, like this. But also I don't want to have the walls all look the same, so I'll make these with windows and here I'll put something else. But yeah, generally uh, variation is the key to uh, making good looking buildings. So yeah, try to vary the materials and uh, don't try not to make it look too uh, symmetrical. No, I still need to come up with a name for this uh, bobsleigh. Um, most of these uh, in real parks don't really have uh, spectacular names. Um, the ones I've written were called Bob, uh, uh, Bob Bahn, and uh, Schweitzer Bob Bahn. So yeah, uh, I, I kind of see a pattern in those names. Um, I will think I will simply call this one uh, the Bob. One name I was also thinking of was uh, Blitzbahn, but uh, I think that's something I will use for uh, a ride that I will build later uh, in this series. I've got a cool idea for something uh, I want to try out. <music> Now, when uh, making buildings, uh, here's another tip. Uh, you can, of course, uh, place a roof directly on top of a wall, but uh, it generally makes your buildings look a little bit more boring. Uh, what I advise you to do instead, you can also see it uh, here. And uh, most of my other buildings, sometimes I use wooden coaster track, but uh, a layer under the roof uh, will usually make it uh, look better. So yeah, there's different things you can uh, you can do. Uh, here I'm experimenting a little bit with uh, different uh, stuff. Um, for now, let's try something uh, new. I will just put base blocks and uh, I'll put some of these uh, shogi walls in front. That should uh, do the trick.
All right, I think this will have to uh, do for now. Actually, I will uh, change the name. I don't like the name. The Bob. I'll call it Tropical Bob. It's a name I uh, think think it's better for this one. So let's also change it here on the side. On the sign, I mean. Tropical Bob. All right, I really like that name. All right, um, I think this will uh, be uh, enough decoration for now. Um, I will work more on the edges uh, as I do uh, and when I make a new ride uh, right next to it or when I make a path. Like I said earlier, I don't want to uh, surround every ride with a path. So I'll probably build something uh, right next to it and then make a path uh, around it. Not sure yet. I mean, I did the same for these two rides. There's no path in between them. There's just a path that goes around them. All right, I think this coaster worked out uh, pretty well. So yeah, here I made the station. Um, also for the queue area, there's a little uh, building which the guests uh, walk through. Um, you often see that for rides. Uh, I think it adds uh, a little character to the ride. I uh, also made a little gift shop here. So in here are two uh, souvenir stalls. Um, other than that, um, well, yeah, there's just the there's the transfer track uh, building. Uh, you can see it here. So I actually made four of these uh, tracks with uh, also with these uh, garage doors. One of them is uh, opened. Uh, so yeah, we'll need a lot of space to store all the cars that could potentially be on this uh, coaster. I played uh, quite a bit with the amount of trains uh, to use on this uh, ride. In the end I settled for three trains and by doing this uh, I make sure that they never have to wait for each other in one of the block sections. It's something that really <laughs> annoys me to see. So yeah, we could have six trains, but the, in the end we have three. So that's also quite a hit on the capacity of the coaster. Also, that's also why the queue time is 12 minutes now. I hit some uh, queue line TVs on this uh, on this queue line, uh, but since the queue line itself is invisible, that means you won't see the actually see the t televisions. And what the televisions do is they make sure the guests uh, don't lose happiness uh, in queue lines. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's probably a good thing. Right about the coaster itself, well I already explained the layout a bit while I was building it, but here's a little recap. Um, so yeah, here from the station they go up this hill, uh, put the landscape, uh, some landscaping under it. Uh, I think that uh, works really well for the lift hill. Now then first there are some gentle uh, helixes. And then after that, it goes through the first block break section. And then it goes into a section with four uh, helixes which follow each other. Um, here it actually builds up quite some speed. So yeah, I think this would be a really uh, fun uh, section to ride uh, if this coaster was, if this coaster actually existed. And after that, there's the third and final section where the coaster actually goes underground uh, twice through uh, some tunnels and just again more uh, more helixes. Here's a little dip over the water before it uh, goes here through the block breaks uh, and then back to the station. So yeah, I don't often uh, build these rides but uh, I think this one uh, works out uh, pretty well. It's often quite difficult to get a layout for these uh, coasters that actually looks nice but I think uh, in, in this example it worked out uh, quite well. Alright, that was it for this uh, episode. Uh, for the rest of the episode, uh, we will just take a ride on this coaster as it goes through this track. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode and I'll see you again in the next one. See you later! Mm -hmm.